snake. I've never seen anything like that, and I've got no idea how to bring it down. Maybe the scientist knows. However you do it, take that thing out.
That was an unmanned weapon. A prototype. I made it myself. Who are you? I work here. Well, used to, anyway. Name's Hugh. And who might you be? You don't look like one of those mercenaries. Me? I'm uh, an entomologist. A fighting entomologist? Yeah, I specialize in butterflies. I'm here to catch Ulysses. Ulysses? Huh. I didn't think they lived in Costa Rica. Morphos, maybe? That's it. I uh, need to get some before the Washington Treaty goes into effect. It says here Morphos aren't covered under the treaty. Uh, must have slipped my mind. You sure you're feeling all right? Anyway, long story short, the butterfly got away. So how about it, Doc? Did you make that big butterfly, too? Uh, yes. <laughs> no. What was that thing? What are they doing here? Huh. Something tells me you're no ordinary entomologist. The nukes were loaded on that machine. The project's entering its final phase. Project? That's right. The thermonuclear warheads they brought in, the bases scattered throughout Costa Rica, the mercenaries, the AI weapons, the research we were conducting here. It's all for this. We use this facility to develop unmanned weapons. Unmanned? Robots. The one you just fought was a pupa. There's also a flying type called Chrysalis, and a treaded type, the Cocoon. Motor control, target detection, tracking, attack, capture, and transport functions are all controlled by an electronic brain. There's no need for a human pilot. They can only follow simple commands, though. Why build them here? For the CIA. They invited me here a year ago. <coughs> That's who the guy was. CIA station chief for Central America. Goes by the name of Hot Coldman. Apparently he was some sort of hero back at the height of the Cold War. He's the one running the show. We called it the Peace Walker Project. Peace Walker? They're going to deploy a new type of nuclear weapon along the Caribbean coast of Latin America. A mobile, unmanned nuclear platform. Unmanned nuclear platform? A failed deadly system that can automatically move into position and launch a retaliatory nuclear strike. It can move on its own, and stealth shields it from radar and satellite detection, drastically reducing the risk of it being destroyed in a preemptive strike. And this is the new deterrent? Supposed to be. The problem is the locomotion system. There's no dry season in the Caribbean. It rains all year round. The terrain is full of tropical rainforest. A lot of the time you can't even build a proper road. So I went back to where it all started. What's that? Legs. Walking power. <laughs> a mobile launcher carrying a thermonuclear warhead even more powerful than the Soviet RDS-220s. That's Peace Walker. <sighs> Chico's Basilisco. We did the assembly and field testing here. A walking nuke. I sort of borrowed the original idea from behind the Iron Curtain. The missing link between infantry and artillery. Metal Gear. Metal Gear? But they'd actually need to deploy dozens of them. Coldman needs funding for that. And to get it, he's planning a test, which will also serve as a demonstration for the folks back at Langley. Wait, he's launching a nuke to prove that his perfect deterrent works? In his words, to prove that if someone attacks us, we will strike back. Put simply, nuclear deterrence is the idea of using nukes to keep nukes in check. If one side launches nuclear weapons, the other is sure to launch theirs in retaliation, which makes launching an act of suicide. In the end, neither side can use its nukes. It's thanks to this doctrine that the world's two superpowers have avoided all-out confrontation. 
Nuclear deterrence has brought us peace. At the very least, it's prevented another world war from breaking out. But the theory of nuclear deterrence exists only on paper. In reality, there's no guarantee that either side would follow through with retaliation. There's the chance that a preemptive strike could destroy all the missile bases, render them unable to retaliate. But the biggest flaw in the theory is that the decision to retaliate has to be made by human beings. Let me give you a real-world example. Let's say Country X launches first against Country Y. If the people in charge of Country Y are like you and me, they're not going to be able to retaliate, knowing that they're effectively ending all human life. So then the weak link in nuclear deterrence theory is the uncertainty of retaliation. Bingo. And that creates a loophole Country X can exploit to launch the first strike. Which is why we designed the system to be unmanned. With Peace Walker, retaliation is certain. It chooses the appropriate target and launches a retaliatory nuclear strike every time without needing human input to make the call. Launching a nuclear strike against Peace Walker is tantamount to pushing the launch button against yourself. It closes the loophole in nuclear deterrence theory, rendering our friends in Country X completely unable to launch. What Coldman is saying is that to achieve this goal, we need to demonstrate that retaliation will be carried out by a machine. He will launch his nuke. And then his version of deterrence will be complete. And you believe him? I believe in peace through nuclear deterrence. Why? My father worked on the Manhattan Project. He put his whole life into that research. And all it created was this illusion of peace called deterrence. And then I was born, unable to walk. I had no choice but to face up to the nukes. But if they do end up launching, it'll all have been for nothing. They've got to be stopped. Where'd they take the warheads? to a base near the border. The final test is five days from now. Where's the base? You're gonna stop them? It's kind of a hike. And besides, there's a surefire way to halt the project. You see, Peace Walker isn't quite finished yet. What do you mean? It's missing one last critical structural component. The AI. It's brain. The reptile pod, the electronic brain I was working on, can only follow commands like, go there, attack that. I guess you could compare it to the human cerebellum. But for nuclear deterrence to work, it must function in place of a human decision maker. It needs something to analyze the huge volumes of data coming in and select an appropriate target for retaliation. Hence, it needs the high-level decision-making ability of a cerebrum. The mechanical cerebrum. The hardware configuration is modeled on the human brain, similar to the pod I worked on, but its role is completely different. Where's it being made? A research lab to the north. An AI expert named Dr. Strangelove is developing it. Very hush-hush. Dr. Strangelove? Strangelove was recruited from the States, too. In the field of AI, there's no one better, that's for sure. But man, what a basket case. She hates everybody. Go to the lab and destroy Peace Walker's cerebrum. I'm pretty sure they haven't finished the final calibrations yet. I'll lend you my ID card. It'll get you through security at the lab. Oh, and uh, one more thing. What's this? A letter of recommendation? Yeah, it's, um, it's from me to Dr. Strangelove. Don't read it, okay? So what will you do now? I... I'm done with science. At this rate, I'm probably already halfway to hell anyway. Not so fast. Why not join us? Our place is outer heaven. You'd fit right in. Outer heaven? Yeah. 
I'm probably better suited to something like that than this paradise. Good. You get a free balloon trip for signing up. Enjoy it. You'll feel like a butterfly. You're an agent, right? Who do you work for? Me. I was a Cold War tool, same as you. Now I'm not so useful anymore, so they cut me loose. I don't answer to anyone. Call me Snake. Snake? The name seems familiar somehow. Death. Probably just Asia. See that there? Beyond the cloud forest? See those ruins? Yeah. That's where you'll find Dr. Strangelove's lab.